healing properties. They can have huge lacerations, which would kill a human, and they're perfectly fine with it. But the crucial innovation of shark sex is the penis. Once the male is firmly attached, a spur at the appendage's tip prevents it from slipping out. A sac in the male's abdomen fills with seawater and propels the sperm directly into the female's womb, where eggs await fertilization. So not only did they invent copulation, but they also invented getting pregnant. That is to say, internal fertilization. This represents a whole new stage in reproductive biology. Internal fertilization has been a foundation of sharks' 400 million year reign as the ocean's top predators. Not only does it protect their developing eggs from enemies, it leads to the birth of large, fully formed pups that are literally born to kill. For hundreds of millions of years, animals would remain confined to the Earth's oceans. 370 million years ago, a unique lineage of fish began to move towards land. Called tetrapods, they evolved legs from fins. In time, those legs became sturdy enough to let them move out of the water. But this new world presented new problems. If you look around today, there are creatures that spend all their time on land. But to do that, you have to have a whole lot of tricks. You have to be able to lay eggs or give birth to live young. If you are laying eggs, your eggs have to be waterproof. The fish ancestors of tetrapods simply dropped sperm into the current to fertilize eggs. But that wouldn't work on land. So one group of tetrapods, the ancestor of reptiles and mammals, successfully changed their method of reproduction. As sharks had before them, reptiles developed internal fertilization. And then they went beyond, evolving an extraordinary adaptation to protect their young. The amniotic egg. This marvel of evolutionary engineering not only nourished the developing young within, its hard shell kept the egg from drying out. The amniotic egg gave reptiles the ability to conquer land, reproducing, spreading, and growing on a whole different scale. And for the dinosaurs, this scale would be a big problem. When you're 40 feet long and weigh six tons, how do you do it? If you can't mate, if you can't pass on your genes, your evolutionary history. But what happens if your own size gets in the way of mating? Some dinosaurs evolved to be the biggest animals ever to live on land. With dinosaurs like T-Rex topping out at more than 15 feet, sex gets complicated. And for all we know about dinosaurs, the details of their sex life remains a mystery. Imagine a 40-ton dinosaur trying to reproduce. Obviously, two of these behemoths would have had to get together, but exactly how they did so is still a, a huge question for paleontologists. Fossilized eggs are clear evidence that dinosaurs had intercourse and reproduced through internal fertilization like birds today. And the bones of dinosaurs are littered across all seven continents. Testament to creatures that dominated the Earth for 160 million years. Clearly, these enormous animals must have evolved an extremely successful method of mating. Paleontologist Ken Carpenter has puzzled for years over the mystery of dinosaur reproduction. It's a whole process of trying to understand what dinosaurs were like as living animals. They had to have been able to reproduce in order to be so successful for over 200 million years. How did the males and females get together? What made Carpenter's investigation difficult was that all he had was bones. No reproductive organs have survived the fossil record. 
to discover what dinosaur sex might have been like, Carpenter turned to a creative mix of comparative anatomy, physics, and deduction. Starting with the dinosaur's reptile cousin, the crocodile. Male crocodiles have unique sex organs, not like the claspers of the shark, but not a penis as we humans know it either. Unlike humans, dogs, cats, they don't have this very long organ that sticks out all the time. It's actually a much smaller organ that's kept inside the body. Most of the time, the male's genitalia is kept inside a slit on his underbelly called the cloaca. During sex, however, muscles inside the cloaca contract, averting the animal's penis. Just three inches long in the 12-foot crocodile, the male must insert this tool into the female's cloaca to deposit his sperm. For creatures the size of dinosaurs, that would be like trying to stick a key in a lock by moving the whole building. Was it possible? To find the answer to that question, Carpenter turned to another present-day creature, one that shares the dinosaur's problem of how to fertilize an internal egg, despite its enormous size. The elephant. To reproduce, the male elephant rears up and leans on the female. But doing so puts a huge amount of weight on her back. Over time, this pressure causes permanent damage, creating small fractures in the female's backbones. If dinosaur sex took the same form, carpenters should find similar fractures in their fossils. This vertebrae here comes from a duck-billed dinosaur. Possibly this breakage was due to the male climbing on top of a female during sex. Well, maybe, but we'd have to know what gender this vertebrae is. If it's a male, it would mean one male trying to mate with another male. Maybe that's why dinosaurs became extinct. I don't know. But the elephant-like rear mount posed a more fundamental problem. The male would have climbed up, put his weight on her back. Could her bones have supported it? Elephants weigh up to seven tons. But some dinosaurs weighed as much as 25 tons. Carpenter calculated the bone strength needed to withstand that much force and concluded that it was too much. The elephant way was out. Undeterred, Carpenter retraced his steps to crocodiles and alligators, creatures with a mating style that avoids load-bearing altogether. They've got the water to suspend them. It's almost like being in space. The male and females can basically rotate together. The male can stick his penis into the female's cloaca and interject sperm. So could dinosaurs have had sex underwater? Carpenter consulted the charts. There were no huge bodies of water, except in a very few places, which would mean then that dinosaurs would have to traipse for sometimes literally thousands of miles in order to have sex. That's an awful lot of work just for sex. Another dead end. Birds were next. They are the